Hello and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial we will be creating a player death animation so that when we lose the last life on the health bar we will show the player die. You may wish to view previous tutorials on how to create the health manager and the health bar itself. So feel free to visit the playlist on other tutorials in this series. If you like what you see please remember to hit like or subscribe. Now let's begin creating our player death effect. So go to scene, new scene, create 2D scene, and we'll rename this to player death effect. Let's add a child node and we'll choose animated sprite 2D. Let's save the player death effect. We'll just pop that into a new folder and we'll call that player death effect and just save that. For the player death effect animation, I'm going to use this animated sprite for that effect. I will leave the link to download the asset pack in the description below. And this is from the Ansimus Gothic Vania Magic Pack. Once the pack is downloaded and you've unzipped that pack, in the sprite sheet, we want to use the spark.png. So drag this and copy this into your player death effect folder. If we just drag that onto our screen and zoom in, you can see this is the color blue and I want to make some modifications to that. So I've opened up the sprite sheet in Photoshop, but you can use other editing packages such as Critter and Paint, and you can make modifications to the sprite sheet before we use it. I've made the changes and chosen a purple color which matches the player. So let's click on Animated Sprite 2D, and then in the sprite frames, let's create some new sprite frames, and here we'll create a new animation, and we'll call this player death effect or just death effect and then click the frames option to add those frames let's just zoom in a little bit and then we'll choose one for vertical and then seven for the horizontal frames and then pick the frames let's add those let's choose auto load to switch the animation on and we'll turn looping off let's just play that what we want to do is add a frame a keyframe on the end so we'll insert that empty frame and let's just increase the frames per second to 12. let's just play that again i'll just put looping on so that we can see that clearly so now that's playing the animation let's just turn looping off again and then let's position the animation a bit higher so we may need to press play again and loop it while we see this so let's zoom in and now we can position the animation because when the player is stood on the ground the feet will be at this point here so if we just go to our wire position and let's just move that up to about there let's turn looping back off now let's create some particles we're going to create an explosion effect so once that animation is playing at the same time so add a new child node and search for particles and we want to create a gpu particles 2d so add that child node here and as you can see we're missing the materials to process so in process material choose new particle process material and that will give us a basic material here then in an editing package create an image which is eight pixels by eight pixels and create a circle inside of there which is white so i've already created one here and this is the texture which i will use in the gpu particles so now I've got my 8 pixels by 8 pixels dot. You can see that there's some particles automatically given. So you may not need to use a texture. You could possibly just do this without. But however, if you do want to use a texture in your particles, what you need to do is cr to create one and make it white with an alpha background. And then just drag that texture into the texture option. So now that I've applied the texture, you can see that the particle effect is working and the particles are being pushed downwards. As it's a circle shape on a transparent background, that alpha channel is creating that clear effect so that you can see the circle. Now the reason why the texture is white is because later we'll add colour to it. Now let's start making some modifications to the process material that generates a little bit more of an explosive effect. So what we'll do is just zoom out a touch and then click on the part the process particles here. The first thing we want to do is to change the shape. So choose sphere as a shape 
and this will create an emission shape where the particles will start to appear in just scroll down a little bit more and i just want to turn the gravity off so I'll set the y gravity to zero and now the particles are being generated in the middle and we'll just turn the direction off as well so that the particles are not being pushed one way let's up the sphere radius to 35 and as you can see now the particles are being generated within that sphere scroll down to initial velocity and let's set this to 30. this will now start to speed up the initial velocity of the particles and let's start to change the size of them let's scroll down and in the scale let's change this to 0.1 so we've got some smaller ones now and then we'll say 0.5 for our scale max let's scroll down a little bit more now let's change the color of these particles so choose color and color ramp sorry and click new gradient texture then in the gradient option let's change the black color and we'll choose a color that is very similar to our player so what we can do is i can open up the spark i just go back to sprite 2d let's turn on the animation again i'll just pause that i'm going to zoom in go back to the gpu particles and then i'm just going to pick the colors from here so if i use the eyedropper i will choose a lighter color and then in this other gradient part we'll choose a darker color and as you can see the particles in the background have now changed so go back to the animated sprite let's just leave this on looping and then play but we'll just switch it off for now so let's increase the number of particles so scroll back up and in the amount let's choose 50. actually let's make this 100. so now we're starting to generate a lot more particles within that sphere now let's scroll back down and what we're going to do we're going to increase the speed scale so make this 1.5 and this is just increasing the speed at which the particles are generated so you can see that effect on there and then let's do 0.5 for explosiveness so it's a bit more explosive rather than that smoothness and i think we'll change the direction of the particles so that they are moving upwards so that to do that we scroll back up and under direction in the y axis put minus 0 0.5 and then we need to add some velocity to that so let's pop 30 in there and as you can see now the velocity is being added to the particles and it is then being moved in the y direction let's just switch on the animated sprite so as you can see we've got the animated sprite and then the particles are on top so let's just switch the order of those so that the animated sprite is on top and then let's move the location of the particles so that they're roughly in the middle so let's just scroll back down in our particle so let's just turn that off so we can then go to the transform and then let's just move that up a touch and this will roughly sit in the center of the player's body that looks good let's create a timer so that when this animation and particle effects plays we can then cue free it from the game tree so go back to player death effect add child node and choose timer in the timer what we want to do is turn on one shot and we'll leave the wait time to one second we also want to turn on auto start and then let's create a script for our player death effect so just choose that node and then attach the script and we'll save this script in the player death effect folder let's click back on the timer and then choose node and then for the timer let's connect the timeout signal so click connect and then just choose the player death effect and all we want to do in here is just say q3 and this will then remove this player death effect from the game now let's just go back to animated sprite 2d and just make sure that looping is now switched off now that the player death effect is now complete let's now add that to the player so go back to the player open player scene and let's scroll back down and we'll go to our on hurt bots body entered method in a previous tutorial i showed you how to add a hurt box to the player with a hit animation and then update the user interface and send the damage value with the health bar so feel free to view that tutorial 
So what we need to do is take our health manager, just check the current health and see if this equals zero. If it does equal zero, let's call a new method called player death. And then under player animation, let's create that new function called player death. I'll scroll to the top of the screen and let's now add the player death effect and preload that in. So it's for player death effect and preload the scene. We can then scroll back down to our player death function and let's start to create an instance of that. We'll call it player death instance and instantiate that player death effect here. Then get the player death effect instance and set the global position to equal the global position of the player. Then we get the parent of the player, add child and pass in the player death effect instance. So what this does is that we create and instantiate the player death effect and we are going to attach it to the player's parent because what we're then going to do is we're going to queue free the player. And if you make this a child of the player and then queue free, you will also queue free the death effect so you won't be able to see it. Now let's run and test the game. So in the test level, I've got an enemy here and let's run into the enemy so we lose one life. Then we lose another life and then we've lost the third life. But as you can see, we've also lost the scene and the player. And the reason is, is because the camera is a child of the player. And as we've Q3'd the player now, we also lose the camera. So it's easy to fix this. We just need to separate the camera and add a camera script. So close the game and let's head over to our levels, open up base level. And as you can see, the player and the camera is a child of that. So just take the camera out and let's rename that. We'll call it player camera and let's add a script to our camera. We'll save the player camera 2D into the player folder. We'll just call it player camera or we'll player camera and then just save that. And in this camera script, let's create the physics process method. And what we'll do, we'll also export the player. That's character body 2D. Then do an if check. So if player is not equal to null, then the global position of the camera equals the player dot global position. And then let's just go to the base level on the player camera 2D. Let's just assign player to our camera. And then for the test level, let's run the test level. And then as we run into the enemy, the camera is following the player. And as we lose our last life, it plays our player death animation. That brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create a player death effect using an animation and also some particles as well. If you like what you've seen in this tutorial, please remember to hit like or subscribe to receive updates on my future tutorials. Thank you for watching.